Hello everyone and welcome back to the Exam Ignite YouTube channel. Uh, today we are starting with the module 5 part 1. The module 1 to module 4 videos are already uploaded in the channel. You can refer the link the description box for the link. Uh, so today the part 1 I am going to discuss about the baseband transmission of digital signals and in the part 2 I will be discussing about the noise. So please uh, stay till the end and uh, this is an handwritten easy to understand handwritten notes made for the exam oriented preparation so i have made this notes uh, based on the uh, referring the textbook model question paper 1 and model question paper 2 january 2025 paper and july 2024 paper here in this uh, in this module uh, we can see there are mainly four important questions that will be coming in the tomorrow uh, in the next exam. That is firstly intersymbol interference ISI. This is an 200% sure question that you can expect. And also you will be expecting I explain the following Nyquist criteria for the dimensionsless transmission uh, and the baseband MRA PAM transmission. These two are the next important question. And in the noise part. Write a short note on signal to noise ratio that is SNR, external noise, internal noise uh, The in the sub questions, has a sub questions and also the next question will be noise in the cascading stages that is a Fritz formula. It is asked in the pa many papers and finally in this module you have to learn the program to answer any of the question in the alternate of those. Firstly code to generate and plot the eye diagram. Eye diagram is very important program. Please do learn it. Don't skip it. Code, code to generate the NRZ and RZ pulse. It is asked in the again two papers and RZ was asked in one paper. Then code to generate the raised cosine pulse. These are the three programs you have to learn before going to the exam. So today and also bandwidth requirement for the TI system for all this theory part I'll be discussing the answer now uh, and also this is a scoring module and uh, very guaranteed questions are confirmed of coming. So please don't skip this module do study it it is really easy to understand. So starting with the baseband uh, baseband of the dimension signals. Uh, baseband is used to designate the band of the frequencies that is representing the original signal delivered by a source of information. Original signal that is delivered by a source of information. We emphasize the use of the discrete PAM which is in the form of uh, pulse amplitude modulation with the amplitude is being quantized into a set of discrete levels. Next, in the discrete pulse amplitude modulation, the amplitude of the transmitted pulses is varied. The amplitude is varied in a discrete manner in accordance with an input stream of digital data. So the basic functional uh, block diagram of the based on the PAM, this you have this is the answer you have to write for the ISI question. Intersymbol interference. So so there will be a source from that we give an input binary data is given in the form of BK. Then we have line encodes which is given with the input of clock pulse along with that we get AK as our output. Then that is transmitted into the filter that is in the form of g of f we are having equations for all this and then we get s of t then we that is sent to a channel that is h of x we get x of t then receiver filter that is q of t we get y of t as our output so this part is called transmitter this part is channel and this part is receiver so finally that y of t after coming from the receiver filter it is sent to the decision making device where we give a threshold limit that is why i of t is sent inside at time t is equal to tb the output is again sent in the binary data to the destination now this is a overall block diagram and we will be explaining in this in the uh, next part the input that is binary data stream as i said bk it at the time ktb where tb is a bit duration uh, at k is equal to 0 comma plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 the element is what bk representing the binary symbol 1 or 0 is emitted by the source of information now the binary stream is applied to line encoders the purpose of which is produce a level encoded signal uh, denoted by ak we get a level encoded signal 
So this level encoded signal AK is applied to next transmit filter to produce a sequence of pulses whose basic shape is denoted by time and frequency domains that is G of T and capital G of T respective that is for the time it is G of T small g of T for the frequency it is capital G of F with the result the discrete PAM is generated so that output is called S of T it is the summation of K is equal to minus infinity to infinity AK J of T minus KTB. Now the PAM signal is what S of T is transmitted across a linear communication channel which is described in terms of frequency and time domain. The impulse response that is H of T and transfer function of H capital H of T respectively. The channel output will be X of T which is what multiplication of the this S of T and H of T. This is a convolution in time domain. Now the channel output that is X of T, it is what it is processed by the receiver filter which is described by Q of T and in the time domain it is uh, Q of T and in frequency domain it is capital Q of F in the frequency domain. So resulting output will be Y of T, Y of will be T will what it is a product of X of T and Q of T. The filtered output that is y of t is next sampled synchronously with the generator at the clock pulses in the transmitter. This clock timing signals are extracted from the received filter output. Finally the output of the, sequ the output sequence sorry finally the sequence of samples thus obtained is to reconstruct the original binary data stream by the means of decision making device now this decision is done is what it is based on the threshold value as we are giving it input above the threshold means one below threshold is zero will be selected so what is the problem here for present discussion we ignore the effect of the additive channel noise we have not included the noise we focus only on the effect of the imperfection in the frequency response of the channel that is what there is a disparance of the pulse shape by the channel on data transmission through this channel so the received filter or uh, the received filter output we need to filter it out that is can be written as y of t as this now the overall pulse shape so that will change and we get the overall pulse shape in the above equation can be expressed by the multiple convolution to do that we have to multiply g of t into h of t into q of t that forms our p of t naturally the received pulse so that has a shape that is different from the transmitted signal. So the spectrum of the P of F in the Fourier transform of that P of T if you trans Fourier transform of this equation is this P of F that is G of F into H of F into Q of F. We marked previously the receiver filter output Y of T is sampled synchronously with the transmitter. So let us consider Y into I of T B. Uh, is equal to summation of k is equal to minus infinity to infinity a k p of uh, i minus k of t b sorry j minus k so where j is equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 this denote the sample of y of t produced at the time t is equal to i t b so let us consider y i has y i t b and p i as p i t b then that equation changes to this form so we define p naught has p of 0 that is our root e so where e is a transmitted signal energy uh, per bit symbol isolated the term is k is equal to j we may equivalently write it as y i is equal to square root of e a and we get the plus addition of that again previous one the first term here it is what a i it represents the transmitted binary symbol except the for the scaling factor that is root e the second term here it is invo involving the combined effect of all other transmitted binary symbol before and after AI represents the residual phenomena called as the intersymbol interference. Finally, you have to write this. So in the absence of the ISI, the above equation reduces to an ideal condition. That is right, uh, this uh, summation part, this summation part gets cancelled. So in the ideal condition, so yi will be square root of ei for all the i. I hope you understand this clearly. Please write down the uh, key points and do learn this question because it is the sure question that will be appearing in the paper. Next is I pattern. The I pattern 
uh, you need to know based on this actually you need to write a program but to understand the concept you can listen about this eye pattern it is produced by the synchronized superposition of as many possible passive symbol inter uh, interval intervals of the distorted waveform appearing at the output of the receiver filter prior to threshold consider the distorted but noise free waveform that is shown the say uh, this is a first figure so the second figure displays the corresponding synchronized superposition of the waveform that is eight binary symbol intervals intervals so the resulting display is called as an eye pattern because of the resemblance of an human eye we call it as eye pattern by the same taken the interior of the eye pattern is called as an eye opening so this figure de depicts the general uh, generic eye pattern of the distorted but it is noise free and binary data the horizontal axis represents the time spans the symbol interval form from t minus t by 2 to t by 2 where tb is a bit duration from this diagram we can say that three timing uh, timing features pertaining to a binary data transmission system first one is optimum sampling time that is optimum sampling time is the time at which the eye opening at the widest maximum so zero crossing uh, filter is in practice the timing uh, signal or the synchronizing the receiver to the transmitter is extracted from the zero crossing at the waveform that appears at the receiver filter output in such waveform the synchronized there will be always be a irregularities in the zero crossing which in turn will give rise to the uh, jitter and therefore non optimum sampling time so timing sensitivity it is another timing related feature that is uh, of sensitivity of the system to the timing error this sensitivity is determined by the rate at which the eye pattern is closed as the sampling time is varied you can observe here uh, here we can observe the slope this is the sensitivity of the time error this is best sampling time distorted at the time uh, distorted at the sampling time this is our margin over noise this is distortion at the zero crossing. Finally, this point will be the time interval over which the wave is best sampled. The request channel for the distortionless dis transmission. The second important topic here we will give an input of AK. What do we get? Overall system characterized by the pulse spectrum that is P of F. We get Y of T as output. Now we sample at a time T is equal to ITB. So Y I of TB is equal to Y A. Decision making device that is sent. We get a reconstructed version of that AK. We also give a threshold limit to it. So this is focus on the overall pulse spectrum P of F. For the optimum solution to the pulse shaping problem, the condition for zero intersymbol interference would have to be satisfied at this minimum transmission bandwidth possible. Yi is what? Here it is Aj. For all J in is determining the zero intersymbol interference. For getting this, it is necessary for overall pulse shape that is p of t the inverse fourier transform p of f is in the above figure has to satisfy this condition so this equation implies sampling that is p of t at a uniform rate it is equal to the bit rate that is 1 by tb suppose p of t is as a is the band limited to frequencies in the interval of minus b not which is less than f and which is greater than b0 where b0 is to be defined then by using the interpolation formula we can express the p of t in terms of this sample values suppose the bandwidth is b0 is related to the bit that is 1 by tb that is bandwidth is 1 by tp if we consider this a case substitute the equation 1 in 2 now we obtain a sync function so based on that it as the optimum pulse shape is given the overall pulse spectrum is defined by the optimum brick wall function uh, the brick wall function is what p of optimum uh, function defines the b naught as minimum transmission bandwidth for all the zero intersymbol interference so the parameter is what is defined as it is called as a nequest bandwidth finally so corresponding the pam system of the figure that i'll be showing with the optimum pulse spectrum p of f 
defined by the equation phi is called as a nyquist channel in short the nyquist channel is defined as the overall pulse spectrum p of f at the equation phi in the optimum solution for the zero c intersymbol interference at the minimum transmission bandwidth possible uh, in a free environment so here we are, you can see this is our first figure as i said and this will be our second figure so plot of the optimum spectrum that is p optimum versus the p optimum time frequency versus time next is mra that is by baseband transmission at the mra data in the baseband transmission of pam system the sequence of bk it is emitted by what by the source of information consists of a binary symbol that are represented by one of the two possible amplitude levels two possible amplitude levels minus one for the symbol zero and plus one for the symbol one on the other hand in the baseband mra version of the system the output of the line encoder takes one of the m possible amplitude levels which is m is greater than z so consider an mra system with a signal alphabet that consists of m symbol with a symbol duration denoted as t seconds we refer to 1 by t has the signaling rate of symbol rate of the system which is expressed in the symbols per second or simply bands so in binary pam system the value of m is 2 and the bit duration is tb seconds the uh, binary pam system transmits the data at the rate of 1 by tb bits per second the quaternary pam for example the four possible uh, symbols may be identi identified with the bits of 00 01 11 and 10 uh, it refers to what word consisting of two bits each symbol represents two bits of data and one band that is equal to two bits per second so we may generalize this result by stating that in a pam system one board is equal to log 2 m bits uh, bits per second the symbol duration t of the mra pam system is related to the bit duration tb of the binary pam as t is equal to tb log zm so therefore in a given channel bandwidth we find that by using an mra pam system we are able to transmit the data at the rate at, at the rate that is log zm faster than the corresponding pam so here it is about the binary here it is about the quaternary for the binary it is what one and zero this is the one tb that let us consider t is equal to tb bits required is what log zm so my uh, m is equal to what levels is two so log two uh, is equal to one bit here quaternary 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. so this will be my 1 tb so this will be 1 second that is t so we are having four levels so m is 4 so for 0, 0, level 0, 0, 1, level 1, 1, 0, level 2, 1, 1 it is level 3 so number of bits here is equal to log zm that is log 2m log 2 4 that is 2 bits so t is equal to tb log 2m that is 2 tb so if we are having 8 levels, similarly it will be t is equal to 3 tb. Next part is the noise which will be, we will be learning in the part 2 of this video. So do watch all the videos and study well for your exam. Uh, do like, share and subscribe the channel for the upcoming videos. Till that, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.